Creative Energy Written and published by God Daily News Introduction Did you know that the Bible can be a profound source of creative energy? From the first words in Genesis, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, we're introduced to an infinite wellspring of divine creativity. As you explore the scriptures, you'll find that this same power, the ability to create and transform, is also within you. You might wonder, how can you tap into this into your own life and work? Let us go on an exciting adventure to discover how to harness this creative energy with the guidance of the Bible's wisdom. Chapter 1 Finding Inspiration in Scripture Since the dawn of time, scriptures have been a wellspring of inspiration, inviting you to explore further into their profound wisdom and harness your innate creative energy. They offer an endless trove of powerful narratives, prophetic verses, and parables that have the potential to awaken your creative flame. You're not just a passive reader, but an active participant in the exploration and interpretation of these sacred texts. Delving into scriptures, you might think, but how do I extract creative inspiration from these ancient texts? It's simpler than you'd imagine. Start by quieting your mind and opening your heart. Read the scriptures with an intention to understand, not just to get through the text. As you come across verses that resonate, pause. Reflect on the words, dwell on their meanings and implications. You'll find that each verse, each story, carries a unique insight that can spark a new idea, a new direction for your creative endeavors. Consider the scripture as a mirror, reflecting back your own thoughts, ideas, and emotions. The stories and teachings can serve as prompts for your creativity, pushing you towards fresh perspectives and innovative ideas. You're not just interpreting the scripture, you're allowing it to interpret you, to inform your creativity and guide your artistic journey. Chapter 2 Embracing God's Creative Spirit Embracing God's creative spirit isn't just about acknowledging the divine force within you, it's about actively channeling this energy into your artistic endeavors. God's spirit is the wellspring of creativity, and you're invited to drink from this fountain. Understanding this concept opens the door to a new and deeper relationship with the Creator. In the book of Genesis, God's first recorded act is creation. He spoke, and it was so. Therefore, the Bible establishes God as the ultimate creative force. Embracing this spirit means recognizing God's creative power within you and using it to express His glory in your work. You're not merely an artist but a co-creator with God. Remember, God's creative spirit doesn't just reside in the big, grandiose things, it's also in the minuscule, mundane details of life. The Apostle Paul reminds us in Colossians 3 verse 23, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters. This is the attitude to cultivate as you embrace God's creative spirit. In essence, embracing God's creative spirit is about surrendering to His divine influence in your creative work. It's about inviting God into your creative process and allowing His spirit to guide your thoughts and hands. It's a journey, not a destination. And as you walk this path, you'll find that your creativity isn't just about you, it's a conduit for God's message to the world. Chapter 3 Cultivating a Creative Mindset While you're learning to channel God's creative spirit in your work, it's equally important to cultivate a mindset that allows this divine energy to flourish. This requires harnessing the power of faith and belief, as conveyed in the biblical account of God's creation in Genesis. Just as God pronounced, let there be light, and there was light, so too must you believe in the potential of your creative ideas to become reality. Start by transforming your perspective. Don't view obstacles as hindrances but as opportunities to exercise your creativity. Remember Paul's words in Romans 12 verse 2, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This calls for a shift in your thinking patterns, allowing you to see beyond the ordinary and imagine the extraordinary. Moreover, eliminate self-doubt and fear. These are the enemies of creativity and can block the flow of divine inspiration. Just as Goliath was toppled by David's unwavering faith, 
so too can your creative barriers be overcome by constant belief in your abilities. Lastly, make room for patience and persistence. Creative energy, like any energy, ebbs and flows. There might be times when ideas don't come easily. But remember, even God rested on the seventh day. He teaches us the value of patience and the importance of rest in the creative process. Cultivating a creative mindset isn't an overnight task. But with faith, belief, and patience, you're on your way to becoming a vessel of God's divine creativity. Chapter 4 Exploring Your Unique Talents Plunge into the vast ocean of your unique talents, exploring their depths and utilizing them as tools of divine creativity. Your gifts aren't accidental, they're God-given for a particular purpose. In the Bible, Exodus 31 verse 3 tells us that God fills individuals with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, concerning all kinds of workmanship. These talents aren't just for personal advancement, but for the benefit of others and the glory of God. Analyzing your talents requires a conscious effort. Take time to recognize what you're naturally good at, what activities energize you, or where others compliment you. These are likely areas where your talents lie. Don't undermine these gifts because they come easily to you, instead, cherish them as divine endowments. Your talents are your strength. They're your opportunity to shine and reflect God's creative energy in this world. In the parable of the talents, Matthew 25 verses 14 to 30, Jesus encourages us to use our talents wisely, to multiply them, and not to hide them out of fear. Being aware of your unique gifts is an exhilarating discovery. It's a journey of understanding your worth in the eyes of God and how you can contribute to the world. Always keep in mind that God gave you your talents, what you do with them is your gift back to Him. So, explore, develop, and utilize your talents to the fullest. They're your divinely embedded seeds of creative energy, ready to bloom and bear fruit. Chapter 5 Practicing Gratitude and Reflection Every day presents a fresh opportunity to practice gratitude and reflection, crucial elements that fuel your creative energy and deepen your connection with God. You're constantly surrounded by God's blessings, from the air you breathe to the talents you possess. Acknowledging these blessings stirs up a sense of gratitude within you. The Bible reminds us in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18 to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It's clear that gratitude isn't just a state of mind, it's a divine mandate. Reflection, on the other hand, offers a platform for you to analyze your thoughts, actions, and experiences. It's a spiritual discipline that's often overlooked, yet it's essential to your spiritual growth. The Bible illustrates the importance of reflection in Psalm 77 verse 12, I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. By reflecting on God's deeds and His works in your life, you're able to appreciate His goodness and draw inspiration for your creative endeavors. Gratitude and reflection work hand in hand. As you appreciate the blessings around you, you're inspired to reflect on them, leading to a deeper understanding and sense of awe. This process doesn't only fuel your creative energy, it also draws you closer to God, enabling you to tap into the divine source of all creativity. So, take time each day to be thankful and to reflect. It'll do wonders for your creative energy and your relationship with God. Remember, creativity isn't just about producing something, it's about connecting with the Creator. Chapter 6 Overcoming Creative Blocks In your journey to harness your creative energy, you might hit a wall, commonly known as a creative block, a state where you seem to run out of innovative ideas and inspiration. This block can feel like a heavy weight, stifling your ability to think outside the box and generate new ideas. However, the Bible offers insights on overcoming this hurdle. Consider the story of Joseph in Genesis, who was thrown into a pit by his brothers. He could have let his circumstances block his creativity and vision, but instead, he chose to rise above. He didn't allow his creative block, his pit, to stop him from dreaming. 
From this, you can learn that overcoming creative blocks requires a shift in mindset. You've to see the block as a stepping stone, not a dead end. Remember, God is the ultimate creator, and he made you in his image, Genesis 1 verse 27. This means you're inherently creative. A block doesn't mean you've lost that, it's just temporarily hidden. Like a sculptor chipping away at a stone to reveal the masterpiece within, you need to chip away at your block. Lastly, don't underestimate the power of rest. God rested on the seventh day, Genesis 2 verse 2, indicating that rest is necessary even for the most creative. Sometimes, stepping back and taking a breather can provide the fresh perspective you need to overcome your creative block. Chapter 7. Seeking Guidance Through Prayer. While overcoming creative blocks is a significant part of the process, seeking divine guidance through prayer can also bring clarity and direction to your creative journey. Prayer, as highlighted in the Bible, is a powerful tool for guidance and inspiration. It's more than just a monologue, it's an intimate dialogue with God, where you express your needs, desires, and seek His direction. Consider this, in Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6, you're encouraged to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your paths straight. This scripture is a timeless reminder to trust in God and to seek His guidance when you're feeling lost or unsure. Prayer can help you tap into a divine source of wisdom and creativity. It's a spiritual practice that can bring peace and clarity, allowing you to see the path forward in your creative endeavors. The act of prayer can connect you to God's wisdom, illuminating your creative process and enlightening your spiritual journey. In the New Bible, James 1 verse 5 tells us that, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. As you pray, remember that God is generous, loving, and willing to guide you. Chapter 8. Connecting with your inner child. Beyond the veil of adulthood, there's an innocent, curious child within you, waiting to be rediscovered in your quest for creative energy. Often, your adult self gets entangled with the cares of this world, and you forget the essence of who you are, a being created in the image of God, endowed with creativity and imagination. Connecting with your inner child is deeply rooted in biblical teachings. In Matthew 18 verse 3, Jesus emphasizes, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is a call to embrace a childlike faith, curiosity, and creativity. Your inner child holds the key to the creative energy you seek. This isn't about regressing to childish behavior but about rediscovering the purity, simplicity, and spiritual connection of your early years. It's about allowing yourself to explore, to be curious, to dream, and to create without fear of judgment or failure. Think about how children absorb the world around them, how they're fascinated by colors, shapes, textures, and stories. That's the creative spirit you need to rekindle. To connect with your inner child, find quiet time to reflect on your early life. Remember the things that brought you joy, sparked your imagination, and made you feel connected to God. Now, integrate these elements into your current life. This may look like painting, writing, dancing, or simply spending time in nature. Embracing your inner child ushers in a fresh, vibrant wave of creative energy, drawing you closer to God's original design for your life. Chapter 9. Surrendering to Divine Inspiration. As you reconnect with your inner child, you'll find an open door to surrendering to divine inspiration, allowing God's creativity to flow through you. It's like becoming a keg tapped into the unlimited reservoir of God's inventiveness, where you serve as a conduit for divine ideas to manifest in your reality. In this, you aren't the creator, but a steward of God's creation. This notion of stewardship may seem challenging, but it's not about control or force. It's about surrender. In the Bible, Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 advises, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your paths straight. 
This suggests a posture of openness and willingness to receive, rather than a quest to generate creativity on your own. You must acknowledge that true creativity originates from God, and you're merely a vessel through which it can express. As you surrender, you'll recognize that divine inspiration isn't a rare occurrence, but a constant flow of ideas and insights available to you. The issue is your ability to remain sensitive, listen, and act on these impulses without fear or hesitation. In essence, surrendering to divine inspiration is about letting go, trusting God, and allowing His creativity to flow through you. It's a step towards becoming a co-creator with God, not by your power or might, but by His Spirit working within you, Zechariah 4 verse 6. Chapter 10. Engaging in Creative Play. Engaging in creative play is your invitation to explore the domain of possibility in God's grand design, where you're free to experiment, innovate, and let your imagination soar. As a co-creator with God, you're encouraged to bring forth new ideas, solutions, and perspectives into existence. The Bible affirms this divine play in the book of Proverbs, 8,30-31, where wisdom personified says, Then I was by him, as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. This scripture illustrates the joy of God's creative energy as it engages with humanity. Creative play isn't about the frivolous or the mundane, it's about tapping into the divine energy that God has infused within you. When you engage in creative play, you're actively participating in the divine dance of creation. You're not just making things, you're making things that matter. This creative process is an act of faith. You're trusting that God, the ultimate creator, is at work within you, inspiring you to generate ideas and solutions that align with His divine plan. Chapter 11 Discovering Beauty in Everyday Life Unearthing the beauty in everyday life is your divine assignment, a spiritual discipline that prompts you to recognize God's creative energy manifesting in the world around you. This isn't an abstract concept, it's about learning to see God's fingerprints in the mundane, and the divine in the ordinary. The Bible in Psalm 19 verse 1 reminds us that, the heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of His hands. So, the task before you is to tune into this divine broadcast, to see the world as God's canvas, filled with His works of art. Being aware of beauty in everyday life is a practice, and like any practice, it requires intentionality and focus. It's about training your eyes and your heart to see the extra in the ordinary. You must allow yourself to be totally present in each moment, noticing the smallest details, the touch of the sun on your skin, the perfume of a flower, a child's laughing. These aren't just random occurrences, they're expressions of God's creative energy, His love and care for His creation. Revelation 4 verse 11 says, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. This verse is a clear reminder of God's creative energy, and your role in it is to discover, appreciate, and honor this divine creativity in everyday life. Embrace this task with a spirit of gratitude and wonder, and you'll find that the world around you is a constant source of inspiration and beauty. Chapter 12. Honoring Your Creative Process. Embrace your own unique creative process, recognizing it as a sacred pathway to connect with the divine and express God's creative energy within you. You're not just making art, writing a story, or constructing a business plan. You're participating in the holy act of creation, a reflection of God's own work in Genesis. Each stroke of your pen, each decision you make, is a witness to the Creator who made you in His image. Your creative process is your personal journey with God. It's not about the product, but the process. It's about how you listen to His voice, how you respond to His guidance, and how you apply His principles in your work. You're not just an artist or a writer or a business person. You're a child of God, a vessel through which His creative energy flows. Don't be discouraged if your process doesn't look like someone else's. God didn't make you to be a copy of anyone else. He made you unique, 
with your own set of gifts, skills, and experiences. Your creative process is your own, and it's sacred. Chapter 13 Embracing Imperfection and Growth While traversing your creative journey, it's important to recognize that it's not only about the pursuit of perfection, but also about embracing imperfection and understanding that growth often comes from our missteps and flawed attempts. God, in His wisdom, often uses our shortcomings to mold us into the vessels He intended us to be. In fact, the Bible reminds us in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9 that God's power is made perfect in our weakness. This means, your creativity, though imperfect, is a conduit of divine power. Just as a potter molds clay, the process isn't without misshapen parts, but it's through refining and reshaping that a masterpiece is created. You too are God's work in progress, your creative energy is shaped by your imperfections and your journey of growth. Remember, the imperfections you see in your work are often the unique marks that distinguish it. Embrace them. They're signs of authenticity, your personal touch, a proof of your growth. Theologian Leonard Cohen once said, There is a crack in everything, that's how the light gets in. Your flaws allow God's light to shine through. Your journey isn't about arriving at a perfect end, but about the growth you experience along the way. So, don't fear mistakes, they're stepping stones towards becoming a better creator. Instead, embrace them, learn from them and let them fuel your creative energy. As we read in Proverbs 24 verse 16, the righteous may fall seven times but they rise again. So, rise, embrace your creative energy and grow from your imperfections. Chapter 14 Sharing Your Creativity with Others In your journey, don't just bask in the glow of your creative energy, share it with others, lighting their paths and inspiring them to embrace their own creative potentials. Just as God shared His creative power with us, creating the universe and all its wonders, you too can share your unique gifts to enrich the lives of others. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, said, now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good, 1 Corinthians 12 verse 7. This verse underlines the importance of sharing your creativity. It's not just about you, it's about contributing to the collective good. Remember, creativity isn't confined to the arts. It's present in every field, from science to business, from teaching to cooking. You've been blessed with a unique set of talents and it's your duty to use them in service to others. You're a conduit of God's creative power, and by sharing it, you're fulfilling His purpose. In a world that often feels bleak, your creative energy can be a beacon of hope. It can inspire, uplift, and bring joy, and who knows, it might spark the dormant creativity in someone else. You're not just sharing a skill or a piece of art, you're sharing a part of your soul, your divine spark. Chapter 15. Finding Peace in Solitude and Silence. As you share your creative energy with the world, don't forget the profound impact of solitude and silence on your creative process. The Bible champions this journey to solitude, with numerous passages highlighting the importance of quiet reflection. Jesus himself often retreated to quiet places to pray and tune in with God, Luke 5 verse 16. Therefore, let's take a moment to analyze and embrace the theological and spiritual significance of solitude and silence. In solitude, you're given the chance to listen deeply to your own thoughts and feelings. It's a space where you can truly be yourself, unfiltered and unjudged. It's your sacred space of self-discovery and self-expression, where your creative energy finds its own rhythm and voice. Silence, on the other hand, enhances your ability to hear the whispers of your heart. It's the canvas on which your creative thoughts and ideas are painted. Interestingly, the Bible reference to solitude isn't centered on loneliness or isolation. Instead, it's focused on the opportunity to connect with God on a deeper level. The Psalms frequently talk about seeking God in silence and solitude, Psalm 46 verse 10. From a theological perspective, Finding peace in solitude and silence is a sanctified journey to reveal your genuine self and express your God-given creative energy. Chapter 16. Letting go of fear and judgment. 
Beyond the quiet sanctuary of solitude and silence, it's essential that you confront and cast aside any lingering fears or judgments to truly ignite your creative energy. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, For God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Acknowledge that fear and judgment only serve to stifle your creative energy and prevent you from reaching your full potential. Take a moment to examine the fears that are holding you back. Are they fears of failure, rejection, or perhaps judgment from others? Understand that these aren't of God, but are obstacles that you've allowed to take root in your mind. You're instructed in Philippians 4 verse 8 to dwell on what's true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy. Likewise, let go of your judgments. The Bible teaches in Matthew 7 verse 1, Do not judge, or you too will be judged. Judging others can be a reflection of your insecurities, fears, or a lack of understanding. By letting go of judgments, you create a space for empathy, acceptance, and creative energy to flow freely. Chapter 17 Trusting God's Timing and Plan You've got to trust God's timing and plan for your life, even when it doesn't align with your own, as it's this trust that nurtures and awakens your untapped creative energy. The Bible is clear about this. In Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6, we're told, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your path straight. Trusting in God's timing isn't a passive act, but rather a dynamic, faith-filled surrender. It's a commitment to yield control, embracing the unknown with the conviction that God's purposes are good and His timing is perfect. This trust is the bedrock of your creative spirit, offering an environment where your ideas can germinate and flourish. God's timing is often mysterious because His ways aren't our ways, as stated in Isaiah 55 verses 8 to 9. However, it's important to remember that He sees the bigger picture and knows what's best for us. So, even when your plans seem to be on hold, trust that God is working behind the scenes. His delays aren't denials, but rather opportunities for your creativity to be refined, matured, and enhanced. When you trust in God's timing and plan, you're not merely waiting, you're growing, you're evolving. You're learning to flex your creative muscles in harmony with the divine rhythm of life. This trust isn't just about patience, it's an act of faith that stimulates your creative energy, opening doors to fresh perspectives, novel ideas, and innovative solutions. Trusting God's timing and plan is, indeed, a divine catalyst for your creative journey. Chapter 18. Balancing Discipline and Flexibility. Finding the correct mix between discipline and flexibility is critical when trying to harness your creative energy. Think of it as the spiritual dance between the steadfastness of a mountain and the fluidity of a river. The Bible wisely advises, let your eyes look straight ahead, fix your gaze directly before you. Proverbs 4 verse 25. This verse underscores the importance of discipline, of having a focused, unswerving commitment to your creative endeavors. Yet, paradoxically, the scripture also teaches us the value of flexibility. Consider Paul's words in 1 Corinthians 9 verse 22, I have become all things to all people so that by all possible means I might save some. Paul was a master of adaptability, adjusting his approach depending on his audience without compromising his core message. Thus, the key to balancing discipline and flexibility lies in understanding their purpose. Discipline doesn't mean rigidity, it's about establishing a consistent routine and structure for your creativity to thrive. It's about setting goals and staying committed to them. On the other hand, flexibility isn't about being wishy-washy or directionless. It's about being open to new ideas, about adapting and adjusting your course as needed. It's about being resilient in the face of obstacles and setbacks. Chapter 19 Seeking Feedback and Collaboration Ever considered the transformative power of collaboration and feedback in magnifying your creative energy? It's a biblical principle, reflected in Proverbs 27 verse 17, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. 
When you openly seek feedback and engage in collaboration, you're not only refining your creative process, but also building a community that fosters growth and innovation. Now, you might wonder, how does this apply to creative energy? Quite simply, feedback is a tool for improvement. It provides an outside perspective, revealing blind spots you might have overlooked. It is an opportunity to hone your thoughts, much as a sculptor might carve a block of marble into a masterpiece. Feedback is a mirror that reflects your work from various angles, offering insights to improve and innovate. Similarly, collaboration is like a potluck of ideas, each person bringing a unique dish to the table. It's an exchange of diverse thoughts, experiences, and skills. When you collaborate, you learn to see things from different perspectives, which can lead to unexpected, innovative solutions. It's a dance of minds, where creativity flourishes. Chapter 20. Rejuvenating Your Creative Spirit Taking a step back to nurture and rejuvenate your creative spirit is an essential and divine part of the creative process, allowing for reflection, renewal, and more profound insights. This period of recharging isn't simply a passive break, it's an active process of seeking God's wisdom and guidance. Psalms 46 verse 10 advises, Be still, and know that I'm God. In stillness, you're better able to hear His voice and discern His direction for your creativity. Moreover, it's vital to remember that God is the ultimate source of creativity. Genesis 1 verse 1 states, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Being made in His image, you're imbued with a fraction of His creative energy. By taking time to rest, you honor the Creator and open yourself up to His creative influence. Consider the analogy of a well. If you continually draw water without replenishing it, eventually the well runs dry. Similarly, without periods of rejuvenation, your creative spirit can become depleted. However, when you take time to rest and refill, you honor a steady flow of fresh, vibrant ideas. Chapter 21 Setting Intentions and Goals Having honored the Creator by rejuvenating your creative spirit, you're now ready to set your intentions and goals, harnessing the divine energy within you to manifest your creative visions. The Bible encourages us to commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He'll establish your plans, Proverbs 16 verse 3. This implies that when you align your intentions with your divine purpose, your efforts aren't in vain. Setting intentions and goals isn't merely an intellectual exercise. It's a spiritual practice rooted in your connection with the divine. Your intentions are the seedlings of your future creations, planted within the fertile soil of your spirit. It's important to take time to discern what you truly desire, and what God has placed on your heart. Goals, on the other hand, give shape and direction to your intentions. They're the blueprint for your creative endeavors. As you set your goals, remember the wisdom of Philippians 4 verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This verse serves as a reminder that your creative power isn't solely your own, but a gift from the divine. As you start on this journey, establish your goals are rooted in your faith. Nurture them with prayer, visualize them with faith, and act upon them with courage. Remember, your creative energy is a divine endowment meant to be channeled for good. Now, with your intentions and goals firmly set, you're ready for the next stage of your creative journey. Chapter 22 Reflecting on Your Creative Journey As you start on this creative journey, it's crucial to engage in consistent reflection, allowing you to assess your progress, realign with your divine purpose, and draw strength from your accomplishments. The process of reflection is a great tool for helping you comprehend your experiences, insights, and the transition you are going through as you embark on this spiritual creative journey. Reflection isn't just about looking at what you've done, it's about understanding your actions in the light of God's Word. Psalm 119 verse 105 states, Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Let His Word illuminate your journey, shedding light on your creative steps and inspiring you to move forward. This theological reflection will help you analyze your efforts in a divine context and draw insights that can guide your future actions. 
Further, reflect on the ways your creativity manifests the divine image within you. As Genesis 1 verse 27 reminds us, God created mankind in his own image. You're not just creating, you're living out your divine identity. This realization can ignite a sense of purpose and passion in your creative work. Lastly, don't forget to draw strength from your accomplishments. Every small creative act is a step towards fulfilling your divine purpose. As you reflect, you'll see how far you've come and how much you've grown. This will inspire you to keep going, even when challenges arise. Your journey is unique, beautiful, and divinely ordained. Embrace it, reflect upon it, and let it fuel your creative energy. Chapter 23 Nurturing Your Creative Soul In nurturing your creative soul, remember, you carry within you a spark of divine creativity that's yearning for expression. This spark, Echoing the divine likeness mentioned in Genesis 1 verse 27, is intrinsic to your identity. It's your sacred task to fan it into a flame. To nurture your creative soul, you need to find space and time to allow your creativity to breathe. You can't neglect it and expect it to thrive. It's like a tender plant that needs sunlight, water, and nutrients. It needs your attention and care. Engage with the Bible to deepen your understanding of this divine gift. In Exodus 35 verses 31 to 32, Bezalel was filled with the Spirit of God, with skill, ability, and knowledge in all kinds of crafts. You're also called to this expression of divine creativity. Prayer is a fundamental tool in nurturing your creative soul. Through prayer, you can align your creative spirit with God's will finding inspiration and guidance from the ultimate creator. Surround yourself with other creative individuals. Proverbs 27 verse 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Their energy, ideas, and perspectives can invigorate your own creative processes. Lastly, don't be afraid to take risks. Stepping out of comfort zones often leads to growth. Remember Peter walking on water in Matthew 14 verse 29. He dared greatly, and so should you. Nurturing your creative soul isn't a one-time event. It's a lifelong journey, and one that, with God's guidance, will yield beautiful and meaningful results. Chapter 24 Integrating Faith into Your Art Your artistry, a reflection of your faith, can become a profound expression of your spiritual journey when you consciously integrate elements of your belief into your creative process. This integration isn't about merely illustrating biblical scenes or using religious symbols, it's about reflecting your faith in the very essence of your work. Your art becomes not just a product, but an act of worship, a confirmation of your faith. Consider the Apostle Paul's words in Colossians 3 verses 23-24, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you'll receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. This scripture encourages you to dedicate your work, including your art, to God. In practice, integrating faith into your art requires contemplation and discernment. It's about acknowledging God as the ultimate source of your creative energy and allowing your art to reflect His glory. This could mean exploring themes that resonate with your faith, embodying Christian values in your art, or using your artwork to express your personal relationship with God. Remember, faith-infused art isn't limited to traditional Christian themes. You're free to explore and express your spiritual journey in ways unique to you. The Psalms, for instance, provide a rich tapestry of raw human emotions and experiences, encouraging authenticity in your artistic expressions. In essence, integrating faith into your art isn't just about creating, it's about worshipping, testifying, and glorifying God through your creativity. So, go ahead, let your faith guide your art, and witness your spiritual growth through your artistic journey. Chapter 25 Embracing the Power of Creation You're capable of embracing the power of creation, tapping into your divine creative potential. By manifesting God's will, you're not only expressing your faith but also participating in the grand scheme of creation. 
Let each inspired act of creation be a proof to your growth and a reflection of your spirituality. Divine Creative Potential Harnessing the divine creative potential within is akin to tapping into an unending wellspring of inspiration and power. You're not just a passive recipient, you're an active participant in God's creation. The Bible illustrates this in Genesis where God made humans in his own image, implying a shared creative ability. You're invited to co-create with the divine, unfolding potentials that may seem limitless. Embracing this truth can transform your perspective, sparking a profound revelation. It's not about endeavoring for perfection but embracing your God-given ability to create. This divine potential isn't just about producing tangible outcomes, but also about shaping your character, nurturing your spiritual growth, and influencing the world positively. It's a journey of discovery, as you uncover the depths of creative energy God planted within you. Manifesting God's Will Embracing the power of creation, it's essential to understand that each of us holds the capacity to manifest God's will in our lives. You are not a passive viewer, but rather an active participant in God's great design. The Bible states in Proverbs 16 verse 3, Commit your works to the Lord, and your plans will be established. This verse implies that your actions, grounded in faith, can echo God's intentions. You're not creating in isolation, but as a part of God's greater cosmic tapestry. This requires deep faith, unwavering hope, and an open heart. Inspired Acts of Creation Within the domain of divine creativity, your role is to act as a conduit, allowing God's inspiration to flow through you, manifesting in inspired acts of creation. You're not simply mimicking the Creator, you're participating in His ongoing work. Genesis 1 verse 27 reminds us we're made in God's image, bearing the imprint of His creativity. It's crucial to understand that this doesn't mean you're creating from nothing. Rather, you're reshaping, refining, and redefining what's already there in innovative ways. You're invited to embrace this power of creation, to contribute to the beauty of the world, and to bring glory to God. Be open to His inspiration, trust His guidance, and let your acts of creation reflect His divine image within you. You've commenced on a divine journey, tapping into God's creative energy, revealing your unique talents, and embracing creation. Remember, 75% of artists believe spirituality greatly influences their work. So keep reflecting, nurturing your creative soul, and integrating faith into your art. You're not just creating, you're glorifying God through each stroke, note, or word. Stay inspired, keep faith at your core, and continue to reveal your divine creativity. Thanks for listening.